Welcome to the Average Australian Podcast. Oh, what a fabulous rally from Tim Cahill. You will not see a better goal than that at the World Cup this year. Oh, great save. save again by it's Schwarzer. It's a huge save. Cahill. Cahill. Tim Cahill has done it again. My drop for Fauna Rolle. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Average Australian Football Podcast. This is episode 26. Eden and I are back this week to discuss all things A-League with an update on the FFA. There's chat about VAR and some transfer news thrown in as well. We will of course run through the EPL at the end of the show as well. So to discuss all of that and much, much more, I am joined once again by Eden. Eden, welcome back. How are you? Hello, doing good, man. How are you? I've been a bit sick this week, but I'm slightly okay. feeling a little bit better, but... Was it the late nights, staying up, watching? I haven't haven't been doing it. I'm that disillusioned with Arsenal that I haven't even <laughs> felt like watching No reason football. to watch it. <laughs> no, and then you see Perth Gloria, right? And it's just a, a bad month of... Oh, it's got to hurt. It does, a little. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, yeah, let's get stuck into it then and you can get it all off your chest. Well, let's let's get it off your chest first and we'll oh, start yeah. with, <laughs> with the FFA. Oh, uh, yeah. We won't go full-blown. Um, nah tinfoil hat conspiracy theory here but let's just update a little bit um as expected the 31st of march deadlines passed nothing's uh changed with the um organization of like the votes and that um the ffa they want nine plus three the three going i'm uh, sorry the nine going to the state federation three going to the a-league clubs one for special interests which is like women's um futsal all that um the a-league clubs want nine plus six uh, which would give them almost uh, like 50% voice inside there. So they pretty much control what goes on. Um, neither are compromising um, the FFA, a dangling, I guess, an independent A-League to try to persuade them that uh, the three votes is enough. But the A-League, I think, smell blood in the water and they want to push as much as they can. Um, what's your, your view on this? Because as much as we dig into the FFA, the A-League has to be reasonable, right? Well, yeah, but also what I think the big news here is that, yeah, the, the deadline from FIFA has just come and gone. Um, because they, and, they came out and said they wanted an extension, but I mean, yeah. like at that point, like they had to get one because no decision was getting made. That's right. But I mean, that's, that's on them. And yeah, now they're begging FIFA for an extension. Um, and meanwhile, I think the clubs are fuming and they're, they're lobbying FIFA to, to come down hard on the FFA. Um, I, I just kind of had a feeling like if this was going to happen, like you just saw they, they were dragging their feet. They didn't want to do it. Um, and it's all kind of just seems to be like token gestures yeah. um, and they're being sort of forced into it. Um, There's and very th- little compromising going on. Well, yeah, and I think one is obviously they want to hang on to power and, and all, all of that, but I think also the other thing is just they kind of don't have the resources or the capacity at the moment to kind of get the planning done and get things in order and get their house in order. Um, so, you know, I just, I'm just so disappointed that, yeah, it, I, I expected it, but still when it's happened, I'm, I'm kind of just really disappointed. You know, the deadline's come and gone. Um, you know, what's going to happen now? It's, it's, it's all up in the air. And I think, um, this off season is just going to be huge, um, in terms of all the changes and developments, because it's a long off season in the A League. Um, there's going to be plenty of time for everybody to be, to be stewing about things. Um, my concern is that we're going to go till like September when everything starts coming back and there's going to be no decision made on this. And while this is going on, there's no expansion talk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's being shelved as well, and you know, clubs are ready to go there, and yeah. and then you're just worried about you know going into next season. Then the where, knock-on effect. Yeah, like yeah. where's the hype going to come from, and where's the buzz going to be around next season? Um, you, you know, where's this marquee fund? Where are the players going to come from? You know, is the salary cap going to get boosted? The TV rights. Um, how's, you know, is the, how's the money going to get distributed for that? And you just kind of have all these question marks over it. And there was so much momentum going into this season and, and early on with the expansion talk and things like that. And it just feels like the ball's being dropped, um, mostly by the FFA, um, through mostly mismanagement, but also just a little bit of, I think, um, uh, unwillingness to, to make the change. So, yeah. I just think it's disappointing and, and I'm just, you know, wondering, 
what's FIFA going to do about it? Like, are they going to go, yeah, look, it's all right. We'll give you an extension or whatever. Are they going to start cracking the whip? If um the 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 A League clubs, if they had say like forty forty five percent of the vote, are you concerned at all like about like the international team or grassroots? Because the A League doesn't have to worry about them. Like their obviously cons- their primary concern is the 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 actual league itself. Like, do you think there's a knock on effect as far as like the FFA, the um Socceroos, uh, grassroots? Like, are you concerned at all from that point of view? Because the more power and money that goes to the A League, the less like naturally goes to them, right? Well, true, but I think also a stronger A-League would be better for the national team um, and for grassroots as well because... Yeah, like an individual like, well, basis, yeah. Well, that's right. There'd be more pathways. There's more people, you know, more clubs, more opportunities for the youngsters coming through. Um, you're going to get better players. You're going to get better national team players. Um, you're going to have probably, you know, longer seasons, more competition. Better if, quality if, of players. Yeah, better quality, show. better yeah. quality foreigners that then boost the league as well. So I think a strong A league. I mean, I know when you look at leagues like England and yep. you go, well, look, the, 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 the league is amazing, but it's at the expense of the national team. I can understand that. Um, but for countries like Australia, I don't think there's any danger of that. No. Um, and, and you look at, you know, countries like China, um, you know, Middle East in UAE and Qatar and these sort of places, they look to boost the quality of their league by bringing in top quality foreigners Which so should, that their well, players, has an impact. Yeah. yeah, so that their youngsters and their players can then play week in, week out against strong opposition in their domestic league. So I think a strong A league is, is a boost for, for grassroots and for the Socceroos. Um, and so I don't, I don't have a problem with it from that point of view. Well, for every bit of hesitation and dragging in the mud that we um, go through week by week with the uh, the expansion and the A League um, expansion, um, we are the first in elite football to welcome video assistant referees. Yeah, um, it starts this weekend. Um, what do you think of like video assistants? Like in general, do you think it's uh, bad? Because the, the big criticism most people have is that it delays um, the football, the the speed of the game. My um, debate to that is that like there's these pauses anyway. Um, yeah. Like when keepers kick the ball, there's like a 30 second period every time. Even when the ball goes out for touch, um, the throw ins and such. Um, do you have any problem with um video assistance being in? Uh, not not in general. I personally, I mean, I do like the kind of um controversy that you get sometimes with the human decisions of you know that it might be a, a sort of maybe a half and half that goes against you and that yeah. kind of adds to the to the drama and things like that. But there's a couple of things that that worry me here. One, why is this being introduced in round twenty six? Do you think of, that's of, just a, like a, a little marketing thing where it's like A-League's the first in the world? Well, yeah. So that, that worries me. One, <laughs> that we're the, we're, we're the first in the world. Like no other league in the world is doing this, but the A-League, yeah, we're going to have it. Two, why is it being introduced in round 26? It's just stupid. I mean, honestly, I can understand maybe if they brought it in for the final series and said, okay, from, but round 26, so now you're going to get a goal line goal that's going to get allowed. And then, and then you're going to get Kevin Musket going, oh, well, in round four, that one that we had disallowed <laughs> yeah. because, you know what I mean? So it's just, it just, you, there's no consistency. I you think gotta, it's you, pure gimmick. Like, it is. To it be is. the first. But I just, I just think it's bad form to change rules halfway through the season. I just My- don't think. That's that makes sense. My only defense is that they want to get it right before the finals, and I think if they have one week just to get out the kinks, like because something's going to go wrong. Oh, um, it's the A League. <laughs> like, <laughs> ideally, you don't want to see that in the finals, right? So, well, yeah. Look, I, look, and I can understand that, but it just worries me that yeah, like we're, a we're the first to do it. Two, it's coming in in the middle of the at the end of the season, and and three, I just have a feeling like yeah. They're doing this to compensate for crap refereeing, almost. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the the standard of refereeing and and goal line decisions in this league has been pretty poor. Um, and this is kind of being brought in as almost like, um, yeah, just to just to compensate for for the rubbish level of refereeing because obviously it's too hard to get professional referees and improve the refereeing so let's just go with video um assistant referees like uh, 
you know, I think eventually, go, you know, in world football, you will see this. Um, well, it's and happening in internationals, right? So yeah. it's just and whether it goes to the leagues, like the EPL and such. That's right. And look, I mean, who knows? Maybe A-League will get it right and we will be a leader in this sort of stuff. I mean, Australia is good with technology and um, those kind of things. So if they can do it well, um, maybe it will be good and maybe we will lead it and other leagues will look to us in, in that regard. But... For me, I just think that the most off-putting thing is just introducing it in round 26. I just don't see how you can make rule changes because straight away you're just opening the door for teams to start complaining and, oh, well, we didn't, you know, if we had this before and all this sort of stuff and it just, you, you just don't do it. There's, then there's no consistency in the in the league and I think, you know, that's one of the most important things is you just got to keep it consistent all season. So. You know, they could have maybe put it in the finals or maybe just for the grand final or otherwise trial it next next season, start with the preseason and, and start trialing it from there. So I'm I'm interested to see it because it will be, you know, a bit of a, like you said, a bit of a gimmick. Um, yeah. But obviously you don't want it to interrupt the game too much. I, I think and, the argument I have is just, just how consistent have the referees been this season? Because yeah. we've seen players at the start of the season get really hurt. Um, yeah. And the referees just ignored it. So, I mean, maybe this does level the consistency. I get where you're coming from because, like, throwing it in now, it changes the um, the playing field. It changes the environment, the landscape yeah. that the players are, are playing in. And to do that one week before the finals is problematic. But, um, you know, if we can avoid a big decision costing a team in the finals, then, you know, I'm all for it. Um, hopefully the delay isn't too much. Um, I don't think it will be. And I think this is the future, whether people think it gets rid of the, um, the human element, the human error. I think that might still be there because you still have humans looking at the ref- uh, the replays and that. So I'm, yeah. I'm not sure it's going to disappear entirely. Um, going into this round, particularly, do you think the penalty for Castro would have stood <laughs> if it was next week? Well, and see, that's what I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, video assistant referee, I think it's good for like goal line things because yeah. that's that's an obvious one and it's pretty quick and easy to see. Did it go over the line or not? Yes, goal or no goal. I wouldn't that's mind easy. it for red cards too, though, to be and, honest. Yeah, and look for an offside as well. I think for those kind of yeah. ones, I'm I'm fine with it. Once you start getting into these ones, like, like oh, intense. was it? Yeah, was it yeah. a penalty or not? The video is not going to really tell you much because, yeah, I mean, to go to go to that Castro one, yeah. uh, personally, I was actually really disappointed in Castro on that one. I thought it was soft. Um, he j- It was just comical. It was one of those ones like, oh, he's kicked me. Um, I should fall <laughs> over now. Yeah. I think I should fall over now. Um, and But the thing is, I think if that one went to a video ref, the video ref would go, well, yeah, it's a penalty. Yeah, he because kicked he he kicked him yeah. and he fell over. So that's where it's going to get murky. And I don't know how much, like if it's a blatant dive where, you there's know, no contact there's, or, yeah, there's no yeah. contact, then obviously, yeah, you can do something about it. But for these kind of ones where it's like a 50-50 and, and all that sort of stuff, that's where it's going to get murky. And like, I don't know where the, the video can actually help you on those. Um, and then again, you're going to start seeing those. Well, are they going to start making the ref look like a fool by overruling all his decisions? And, um, you know, or, or how does, how, like, has it actually been clarified? Like, how's that going to happen? Is it only the ref that can call for the video replay or can the, like, if the players start going, oh, check the replay and the ref's like, no, nah, no, nah, I've seen it. Um, yeah. Like, who um, makes the call? I don't think it's like cricket whether the team gets a certain amount of, like, go to the ref, uh, the video ref. Yeah. I think it's just the referee's decision. I, I actually think it's just going to be on every decision. Like, well, that's what, think, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, well, if it's up to the ref, they're just going to start chickening out and they're just going to refer everything. Yeah. Interesting that refs on the field do get the final say, so I don't know, like, what will happen if they ignore it. Um, cause yeah. that could be controversy if like there's well, two competing decisions and if there is two competing decisions, will the, um, the viewers actually hear it or will that <laughs> be kept quiet? <laughs> this, this is where it's, yeah, this is where it's going to start getting real gray and this is where the problems start beginning. Like you said, if the ref doesn't refer it and then they show the replay and it was a dive or it was a goal or whatever, it's yeah. like, oh, he's stuffed up. Otherwise, if they start referring everything, then it's just going to get ridiculous um, you know, 20 decisions a, a match or something is just going to get crazy. And then it's, 
it's just going to change the whole dynamic of the game that like every time there's something, oh, we got to look to the screen now. And are they going to have one of those like, like cricket style ones <laughs> where it's like, here comes, oh, no goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are you going to start seeing like this kind of stupid, like cricket style stuff, like, you know, Mexican wave going around the ground <laughs> while they're waiting for the decision? Yeah. Oh, offside. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I just, I don't know. It's got, I don't know. It's got disaster written all over it, this thing. Uh, I'm I think, just I'm worried. Yeah, I think the fact that it's going to be consistent to the goals and the red cards, we won't see it as much as we think we will. Yeah, I um, hope so. Yeah, yeah I, I hope, oh, that's what I think. Just keep it for, they should just really keep it for offsides and goals that have gone over the line or not. I, I think even penalties and things like that, that for the time being, leave it up to the ref. They, they should be in the right position to be able to see like most of them. Um, I just think give it give it for just goal line and and line decisions i think but yeah we'll see we'll yeah, see what's going to happen the um, decision making is transparent so we can actually understand what's happened um but let's go into the adelaide uh, perth game obviously the castro dive penalty contact whatever you want to call it um gave uh, perth glory a draw that point may prove important um given results yeah. elsewhere with our city the wanderers and even wellington phoenix because i think it makes it where wellington phoenix need two good results now instead of just the one that's this is right. assuming that perth glory if they lost both their games so um that point yeah very you know important um adelaide obviously very impressive deserve to win uh perth continue their poor form and in this sort of um state it's very hard to see how they do anything in the finals um, what do you make of the game and I guess the fallout like um, Perth Glory from here? They have to play Brisbane and City at home, yeah, which is not easy. And um, actually, uh, do you want to go straight into the the four teams that influence the the top four, the top six, and predict yeah. them yeah. instead? Yeah, okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, let's go into Perth, right? So they play Brisbane and City at home. Um, what do you th- just out of a, a six point um thing? What do you think they get from those two games, both at home? But as we saw against Sydney. They got absolutely thumped. So, I mean, does home for Perth still mean something? And obviously, uh, Brisbane and City aren't Sydney. So, what, what do you yeah. think is going to happen here? Well, look, I think uh, I think Brisbane will probably have an ACL game in between. So, that might work yeah. in, in the glory's favour. Um, Melbourne City have, have fallen away terribly. Um, and, and as have the glory. Um, and that, that point against Adelaide was, like you said, just absolutely crucial and i think it kind of shows um the the wiliness and the smarts of of castro that he saw it like they were playing terribly they were getting battered glory um they had nothing and he just had to go down and get that penalty because otherwise they would have lost that game and then they'd really be in trouble yeah it was calculated and he knew what he had to do i'm I'm disappointed that he kind of did that in a way because for for two seasons now he's been like um supreme like well behaved good discipline um just just, pure just technique. yeah pure technique keeps yeah. his mouth shut and just gets on with it and this is like almost like the first time we've seen him do something but i think it kind of showed a bit of the desperation from the glory um that they just had nothing um and they were starting to really panic and he had to dig them out of that hole single handedly but um i think if the glory can pick up uh you know, even three points out of those two games, one win, um, that, that should probably be enough. I think they'll probably get over the line against City, um, and, and maybe get a point against the Raw. Yeah, I can um, see him picking up four points. Yeah, four points is possible. Um, but look, I mean, they, in theory, they should be able to knock off both sides. They're strong at home, Glory, but they've just sort of fallen away again a little bit. Um, but, yeah, raw, raw with the ACL that'll hurt them, and and City just still worry me a lot. I think the um the the game this weekend it comes before Brisbane start traveling again. I think it's after, so I don't know right. if they're going to rest people because they don't play this week, do they? Like midweek, I think it is the following. Oh, it's the following week. Yeah, well, in that case, I think Glory need to to watch out a little bit because we saw McLaren there finally sort of um, picked yeah. up some form, and he did. That was a, that was a cracking game, I thought. Um, I yeah, it's another game where I didn't think Mariners deserved to lose by four no, goals. No, and you, they <laughs> they started off so well, and I thought, oh, you know, that goal from Ferrer, and I thought, wow, they you know they're taking the game to them, and all of a sudden, um, Raw just turned it on, and and good on McLaren. Um, yeah, 
he was really eight, eight in the minutes, zone there. I think. Yeah, yeah eight, trick, eight yeah. minute hat trick and um, really kind of, I think it was quality finishing as well from him there. Um, you see it came out and he said 80 clubs are after him. <laughs> yeah, I, that was, yeah, that was the, um, the, the word on the street. Oh, look. That is more, you know, that's just the the his agent just trying to pump up something. But I wouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of clubs after him. He is probably now you would say, um, you know, the best goal goal scorer in Australia, in uh, or the best Australian um, striker in the A League. Um, yeah, it's fair, fair say, I think. And he's he's finally hit that form. Um, and, and I thought it was a quality hat trick from him. So I thought that was a good performance. Good performance from the Roar overall there. Um, they, they've been up and down as well. But just, yeah, traveling to Perth, I, I don't know. Glory again, just back to their old ways. Just when you think <laughs> it's, you know, they're on a roll. Um, they've just kind of lost it a little bit again, haven't they? Yeah, that, that big game uh, this weekend against Brisbane is a danger game because I don't think Brisbane will rest players because I think the uh, the Asians' Champions League is pretty much a throwaway for them at this point. Um, oh, yeah. And, and and they're still, like you said, the top four, you know, Melbourne City could still overtake them or catch them and you do kind of want to um, be a, as high up as you can. So they do still have a bit to play for um, and... You know they they've been pretty good recently, so um, I get the feeling that Adelaide United might be their best friend in these two weeks because Adelaide play the City and they play the Wanderers, which is the two teams that potentially could go above Brisbane. So I think Brisbane could even yeah. lose against Perth and still be fine, just purely based off how good Adelaide have been right now. Yeah, that's and that's that's very possible. And Adelaide, like you said, they've they've finding form now at the right time. Um, they could take points off off a couple of those teams in the in the last couple of games. Absolutely. Do you think they'll take points off City because City play Adelaide at home and then have to travel to Perth, like we just mentioned? Look, I wouldn't be surprised if if City smashed Adelaide in the next one because they've <laughs> yeah. just been like that as well, hit and miss, and and Adelaide's um, run might kind of come to an end. Um, but they've been really good. I, like I've really been impressed by Diwara. Um, I he think he's been excellent. He he's been excellent. Um, hopefully they can keep him maybe and and build off that for next season. Um, but he he's been good. Um, and I don't I don't know what it really is. They've just kind of it's just finally clicked for the, for Adelaide. Um, and obviously a couple of the teams have kind of dropped off a little bit, but. Um, I don't know. They've just really kind of turned it around and been impressive. And you just got to wonder, like, you know, if they had a striker of his quality from the beginning, like how far they could have got because it hasn't taken them long. Um, And all of a sudden they're they're in eighth. Um, So, you know, (laughs) a couple more wins early on and they would have been in the mix. Oh, definitely. Yeah. um, Just, you know, they've only got themselves to blame for that. But, yeah, Diwara has been good. McGowan's been good. Yeah. Thirio's found some form again a little bit there as well. Um, they they've been fairly impressive, United. Because um, City were pretty much picked apart by Sydney, oh, much yeah. much like Perth were. Um, uh, it feels like going into the finals, like Sydney are just like head and shoulders. Like, yeah, you just think they're going to cakewalk it, like because they're just so above. Like in terms of their, like the, their, the clinical behavior and like in front of goal and their defense, their centre back pairing is just so much above everyone else in the competition, and it's difficult to see where they lose, even in a knockout stage. Because we used to always say, you know, yeah. take it to a knockout, and there's different teams that will will threaten them. But like right now, it's it's just hard to see. Like what team will show up because like the form is just so fluctuating um, for pretty much everyone but Sydney and it's just like who's going to show up on the week that they need to. Yeah, well, look, that was my only question, Mark. Was yeah, who you know, Sydney in a shootout. Like, well, City have still got all these goal scoring threats, and Melbourne victory play a high press and a super attacking game. But yeah, I think the last couple of weeks for me has just cemented that Sydney are going to steamroll this because they went to Perth. Perth pretenders to the throne. <laughs> Sydney just crushed them, they absolutely did. crushed them. And then up against Melbourne City again, you know, City, they got Fornaroli, they got Cahill, um, this and that. And again, Sydney just couldn't, you know, wouldn't let them play, gave them no opportunity. They, I mean, you look at the, the highlight reel there and City really had one chance and that was Fornaroli hitting the, the post from yep. a free kick. That was it for the whole game. And again, you know, 
Sydney, maybe not the most exciting team, but they make it so tough for the opposition. And then so all commanded. of a sudden it's just bang, bang, and you're two nil down. Um, and they just, they just steamroll you in the end. And, you know, I think the last couple of weeks has cemented it for me now. It would be a grave injustice if Sydney don't win this, um, entire thing. Ironically, it's probably the Wanderers they want to avoid. Yeah. Because that Sydney Derby, the crowd, and we've seen the Wanderers beat them. Like, they're probably the only team that Sydney really just want to stay away from. Not that I think the Wanderers are the, the second best team in the league right now, though on form, maybe they are. But, you know, just that Derby, anything can happen, the mantra there. Like, the Wanderers, given their form, I mean, yeah, they thump the Newcastle Jets, who we've said repeatedly have gone on holiday. Yeah. Um, but the Wanderers play victory at home and Adelaide away, not easy. Um, but given the form and the victory of sort of. I don't know, hit cruise control a little bit and they've um, come across some bumps and they just seem uh, not to have too much motivation right now, especially with uh, Wellington beating them 3-0. Um, do you still think it's a little too late for Wellington or given that they play Sydney at home and Brisbane away, I mean, those fixtures, brutal. Right? Yeah, tough for them. But like you said, probably the form teams now would be like Wanderers, Phoenix and, and Adelaide United. <laughs> if you can, if you <laughs> if can you believe Sydney, that. Yeah. yeah, if you remove Sydney, they're the ones. And... Phoenix have turned it around maybe a little bit too late. Um, they need to really win both um, or at least get four points and have Glory lose both. Um, if, so, if Melbourne City had one point less yeah, and like if six points got Wellington above Melbourne City, which it doesn't because it only puts them to 35, Melbourne City on 36, I think they'd have a chance because I can see Melbourne City losing both games. Yeah. But I think Wellington have just left it one or two points just a little out of reach. Just yeah, just a little bit. Um and again, like, you know, all of a sudden, just like Adelaide, it's clicked for them. Bonavazia playing well again all of a sudden. Barbara is finding a bit of form. <laughs> Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, and that yeah, well yeah. and that's that's a huge signing, I think. It he's is. he's been one of those players like you saw it even last season, like if he went to a bigger club, um, he could really kind of um set the league alight I would have thought um, so that's that's going to be interesting for how he's going to go in a, in a bigger team um, with more pressure and more big games um, because Before he the is... game I was going to say sorry just cut in um, I was going to say like does he help uh, the Wanderers with their goal scoring problems but I mean now he scored that the, the brace for Wellington like maybe he does with um, Santa Lev across from him Oh yeah, look, he's he's a goal scoring uh, player. He and he scores from distance. Um, his probably only question marks are that he tends to go missing in games, and he doesn't really offer you much in defence. But obviously, the Wanderers realise they need attacking players, and they need players who are aggressive and and you know going forward and can score from from different areas and 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 create opportunities so they need that kind of x factor player um and he he is an electric player so i think that's a big um signing for them and a big loss for the phoenix yeah definitely Um, troubling waters for them yeah well yeah i mean who who even knows what's you know who's going to be there next season like <laughs> yeah. you know they even you know what's what's happening and and even with all that they're still kind of there or thereabouts um which shows you you know that they they they're still probably an asset to the league if they can just kind of get a few of those things together they they could be a top 6 top 4 side um but they, yeah, probably left it a little bit too late at this stage. But yeah, like I said, Wanderers all of a sudden, um, they're back. And, and like you said, if there's a, a Sydney derby in the finals, um, that could be, that could be huge. And yeah, like you said, that's, that, that turns everything on its head. And all of a sudden, Sydney FC could be, could be, you know, that could be their nightmare draw. I think it is, to be honest. Like, I yeah. think they'd rather play victory at home than the Wanderers. Well, they've accounted for the victory now, and they know the victory plan. Um, and and like you said, Wanderers, if that's a final, that could be that could be back at um, Homebush again, where there could be like sixty, seventy, eighty thousand. Yep. Um, and all of a sudden, yeah, like you said, anything can happen. Wanderers with a bit of form, I, I just think Popovich just kind of tweaked things a little <laughs> bit for them. They're a bit more direct now, and, and just a bit more attacking. Um, but look, I mean, that game against Newcastle Jets, Jets were abhorrent. Like, they, Cornthwaite was scoring those headers, like, unchallenged. And they had no Santa Lab. 
Yeah, that's right. And, and it just looked like there was just nothing from, from the Jets. Like they're just capitulating. Um, to see Wellens and Phoenix so close to the finals, like Newcastle must be kicking themselves. Well, yeah, probably about a month ago, you were like, oh, you know, here we go. The Jets could actually make the finals here and they're on a bit of a run and, and things are looking okay. And the, the form of Naboot has, um, dried up. And, and with that, um, all of a sudden, it's just falling apart at the seams. The the latest story there was that Hull um, had a bit of a run in with the with the manager and the assistant manager there when he was coming off. Um, that is interesting, right? Because the player has notoriously been known as someone with a poor attitude, and to yeah. see it happen at Newcastle, um, given their stellar mid season form, it's just disappointing for all involved. Like I can't see him being there next season. Well, apparently now the latest report is that he's kind of patched it up. Um, okay. But from I would assume that he'd be gone because um, he, he's a talent. Yeah. Um, but obviously that that just shows you that there's something going on there um, when you're getting that kind of um, petulance from someone. Um, things aren't going well. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a clean out at the Jets um, going into next season. Things were looking bright. And is the manager it's, it's, included in that? Possibly. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised because I, I'm not seeing the signs of, of, you know, in, any sort of improvement. Um, the only worry there is that he's already sort of started recruiting now. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if they're going to cull him, they need to do it fairly soon at the end of the season, I would guess. Um, and maybe that's what they're doing now is give him a couple more games. Now he got to the end of the season. Let's see if he can turn this around. But, you know, look, I, I, I know their season's almost over and, and there's not much to play for. But if they can't show a bit of heart in these last two games just to not be whipping boys... Um, you, you got to worry about whether the manager can take them forward then next season. Yeah, because it's a question whether this um like end of season funk does it continue once they once they go away for holidays like when they come back is that still remembered like that's is it, right. has it been a long enough distance for them to forget about it because if it stays there when they come back the only thing that changes that is a change of manager so I, I think mean, so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah big, big times big for big the Jets. big big problems for Newcastle Jets absolutely let's leave uh, the round there we'll go into next week um just give your predictions and I guess your big uh what you're interested in about this match particularly. Uh, to start with, Melbourne City versus Adelaide on Friday night. A huge game. Yeah. Um, Adelaide right up for it. Melbourne City typically better at home. Uh, this is an interesting game, as we said, because the position of <laughs> Melbourne City compared to the teams <laughs> below them. Um, Melbourne City can't fall out of the top six. That's actually mathematically impossible, but they can fall out of the top four, which would be yeah. huge for them. Um, what do you think with Adelaide? I feel like in Melbourne, Adelaide could sneak a draw. I'm struggling to think they'll beat Melbourne City though. Yeah, I think, yeah, look, a draw, a draw would probably be a good result for Adelaide. I still think the Diawara X factor, um, could surprise Melbourne. Um, cause I don't think they've come up against him yet, City, and, he, is there a striker like him in the league, like a big target man? Like obviously back in the days you've got um Heskey and such, but you haven't seen one for a while. Nah, not for a while. And and like I said, he's really impressed me. He's clinical, he's a good finisher, he's got a good touch, good awareness. Um and and those goals that he's been scoring, like the headers, they've been superb, top quality. Um I've I've been really impressed with him. And I think he might take uh, Melbourne City by surprise a bit, especially if City go with three at the back again. I just, you, you just wonder, you know, if they, Adelaide get a few balls into the box, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he scores at least one in this match. Um, I, I think City are just, I don't know. I can't even, I, I just don't know what's happened to them. Um, they just look flat. Um, you know, Fauna Roly still off his game. Cahill uh, struggling a little bit, um, gone quiet, um, and that's fair enough. You know, he he's like I said, he's he's really just an impact player, but um, still not seeing much from the likes of Bratton and and Kamau. They've all kind of gone a bit quiet. Brandan's um, been a big loss, hasn't he? Brandan's been a big loss. Colazzo's failing to deliver. Um, and then the defending is, is a bit of a worry as well. Um, they're still missing, um, Jakobsen. 
Um, Kilkenny, I think, should be back probably. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah. But just, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Adelaide pick up a point in this one. Yeah, me neither. Um, I feel like maybe this is like just a change of manager would fix this, but I don't feel like Tim Cahill and Fornaroli need, uh, should be at the same club next season. Like, I just like tactically, I don't know where they fit in with each other. Maybe a new manager changes it and it looks like, oh, this is how they work. But yeah, I just don't, I don't see it. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, I, yeah, I, I challenge. Because it's two man- different tactics. Like, it's two different styles of play. And well, Tim look, Cahill's I mean, Fornaroli aging, right? scored. Yeah, look, and, and Fornaroli didn't score all his goals last season from being at the pointy end of things and, and finishing it off. And you saw like a lot of his goals were deep in the box. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they were still cracking goals. They weren't just tap-ins, but he was in and around the box. And now he's dropped back yep. um, and he's dropping deeper and he's trying to be more of a creator. And a, a little bit of that's because they're missing someone like a Moy. Um, but that's true. Yeah. Look, I, I, I just challenge a manager to come in next season if it wasn't, um, and Valcanis and to actually drop Cahill or drop Fornaroli. I think you can <laughs> find a way for them to work, but you just need to, yeah, look, I know what you mean. It's, it's a tough situation. And, um, look, I think next season probably Cahill will be dropping to the bench more and more as well. Um, but yeah, it's just been, I don't know. It's it's just been, I think all over the park, there's been problems for City, not just the goal. So, um, yeah, fair point. I, I think Adelaide can definitely sneak a point in this one. Yep. So we both agree that Adelaide should pick up a point, get the draw, which makes uh, things interesting at the top half. Um, to continue yeah. that, we've got Wellington playing Sydney uh, in, uh, I think it's, I think it's at their actual home ground. They, they travel so much to Auckland and such. Um, yeah. Sydney... It'd be interesting, right? Because you expect them just to play full strength. Um, though they, I don't know if you saw Graham Arnold told a few of his players to get second, uh, yellow cards to get suspended for this match. Yeah. So they wouldn't get suspended in the finals, which is the intelligent thing to do. But it, um, does raise a, a few interesting points with this game because Wellington have been in good form. I could see them getting a point. It means absolutely nothing in the context of uh, the top six. But what do you think of this game? I think this is an interesting one. I'm I'm curious to see how Sydney do in this one. Um, because yeah, Phoenix have been pretty good recently. Um, Sydney to travel to Wellington. Um, uh, I think maybe uh, they'd probably be happy with a draw. Um, can Phoenix knock off Sydney? Can they can they pull that off? I don't know. Um, but. You know, they, they've been pretty good recently, so I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I still think Sydney, they've shown recently they can pretty much go anywhere and, and, um, and do the business. So I think it might be another draw in this one. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I can't remember who actually got the, the yellow cards to get suspended. I know it was O'Neill and someone. I think it was Brillante as well. And, Brillante, and it's interesting that right. you bring that up because I saw, you know, FFA now are looking at, um, <laughs> trying to punish Graham Arnold or, you can't or Sydney. Punish that. Look, I, I, yeah, I don't see, I don't know if there is actually a clause or something like that in there. You know, maybe they'll find something like, oh, you know, it's not in the spirit of the game or something like that. But I just don't know. My only question there is why did Arnie have to tell these guys like from the sideline in the 65th minute, like, oh, get a yellow. Like you could, like, I would have thought they would have discussed that before the game. Like I would have thought someone like Arnie would have been so on top of things there that he would have just gone before the game, like, hey, 65th, 70th minute, if we're on top, just get yourself a yellow and, <laughs> you know. It, it, to be honest, I'm sure he is, but players aren't the most intelligent. Yes, yeah, so he just had to take the you world. Idiot, Hurry up and get that yellow. <laughs> It's just funny how quickly he got it. Yeah. yeah. Like after he told <laughs> it. Like it was literally that like 15 seconds okay. later. Okay. <laughs> just got to go and break someone's leg. Yeah, Did exactly. I do good? <laughs> Did I do good, boss? <laughs> it's like, ah, yeah, you've been suspended for six games. You're going to miss the grand final. No. Yeah, look, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't see the problem with that. The rules are there. No, um, and that, that's, again, one of those ones where it gets murky in football. Um where, you know, like, for example, come round the last round in the A-League, they don't play like in the Premier League where it's all at the same time. So if, you know, results go a certain way on a Friday night and then the team that plays on Sunday knows that they don't need to get anything out of it to, you know, finish on top, then what's to stop them fielding a second string side and preserving their 
best 11 for for the next round of you know the first round of the finals and that, you get into those kind of like unethical yeah. things and you know it's interesting for the ffa to try and crack down on this now but there's there's so many things where they leave um things murky as well um like you know musket was calling the the integrity of the competition into question with the the break and things like that so it's interesting that this is one that the FFA are trying to crack down on when people are accusing them of, of the same sort of thing a lot of the time. Yeah, I think the, the, the punching inside the tunnels is probably a little bit more important uh, the, <laughs> than the uh, the deliberate yellow cards to get your player to play in the actual finals. That's right. But, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, to continue the Wanderers at home against Melbourne Victory, this is on the Saturday as well. It's a triple header yeah. on the Saturday as per usual. Um, another big game. Wanderers in excellent form at home, um, playing for that home final. I think they'll beat Victory, personally. Yeah. I, th- I think this is going to be another cracker. This is a good round. Um, and yeah, Wanderers victory should be huge. Um, yeah, Wanderers are all of a sudden back in the game and, and victory have, have dropped off. Um, you know, it looked like it was just like a little bit of a blip for the victory and that they were going to bounce back. But, um, against the Phoenix, they were just flat. Um, they were really flat. Barisha, Rojas has gone a little bit quiet. Um, Troisi maybe just a little bit quiet as well. Um, Burrow got the red card against Phoenix. He's going to miss the game. Um, there. Why is that? Is it because the, the the second place is just so secure? I think it is a little bit of that. I mean, uh, you know, they thought, and also I think maybe, you know, pundits thought, well, you got all these returning internationals. They're going to be, you know, full of steam and stuff, but maybe, you know, you travel around the world, um, coming back. I think maybe that might have, um, sort of sapped those players a little bit. Um, and, and I think maybe it is a little bit of that complacency, um, of second spot, but, you know, I think they need to turn it around quickly because you don't want to be going into the finals flat. Um, and I think this is going to be a cracker because, yeah, the Wanderers have really turned it around recently and they found goals. That's That's been the crucial thing for them. They found a way to score um, and, and things are happening for them. So I think there's going to be a cracker and I'm with you. I think Wanderers in, in this one. Yeah, I do think so. And I, I actually think they'll get the home final, which is extraordinary considering where they were yeah that, that um, would be massive wouldn't it it would yeah i think sydney will be a heavy impact into the finals uh at the end there so um to continue on we go to perth now at the 8 p.m kickoff uh it is against brisbane raw who we as we said go midweek into the asian uh travels i don't think it's going to inf- uh, influence this game because i think they'll prioritize this over the asian champions league um, it's going to be interesting, right? Because we don't know what Perth Glory will show up in their home, <laughs> home game because we saw what Sydney did to them. Um, they weren't great against Adelaide. Do we see a response from Perth Glory? Because I think we need one from Keo and Taggart, especially. Yeah, they've both of those guys have gone quiet. Um, especially Taggart. Um, he was red hot and, and really, um, quieted down. Um, I think this is this is another cracking game. I think this is going to be a ripper game. Um, I think you'll see Glory go go for the attack, um, and I think you'll see Brisbane Raw do the same. I think the difference between you know a, a Sydney and a Brisbane Raw is Sydney really control the game. They control the tempo. Um, they boss the other team around. I think Brisbane Raw will be a bit more open um, and probably a bit more direct. Um, and really just looking to feed McLaren a, a lot of the time. Um, I, I, and I think Glory will, will be going pretty much all out um, without going crazy. Um, I mean, like you said, it it really depends on how that Phoenix result goes because if Phoenix get... Say if, if Phoenix knock off Sydney, um, then, then I think you might see a different Glory. Then you think you might see like a bit of a conservative Glory and then they'll be like, look, we just need to get a point. And they're not going to go all guns blazing, maybe. Um, if if uh, Phoenix lose to Sydney or only get a point and um, the glory are pretty much safe, then, you know, you might see a little bit more from the glory. Um, How big is this game going to be if Wellington beats Sydney and Victory beat the Wanderers, yeah, like for Perth glory? Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it could be massive. Um, and, and, and like, because the thing is, I think if the glory finish sixth, 
um, then that they're, they're done already. They I are. think um, they're not. Good. Also, because that means that their form is atrocious. Yeah. Because if they finish six, that means they've lost one of these Brisbane City games. Yeah, that's right. And 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 I just think yeah, and then they're probably going to have to come up against them in the finals again, um, or it could be the Wanderers as well. I, I just think that they're, they're going to get knocked out straight away. So I I, I feel like they kind of do need the win. Um, and if you can't win at home, you, you know, it is Brisbane Raw. Forget but yeah, about it. That's right, forget about it. And, and they look so good at home recently, but uh, it, it just goes back to the same talking points we've we've had before with the glory is that uh, it's just, you know, individual brilliance of Castro. When Castro is... I still think they lack an identity. Yeah, and, and when Castro is there to feed Taggart, Taggart looks great. Um, when he's not getting any service, Taggart's just um, anonymous um Keo, I don't know, like is he carrying an injury or something? He's really gone quiet. Um he's he's dropped off a fair bit. Um and he you know, you just uh, the the rest of the, the players around there, Reese Williams um probably gone a little bit quiet as well. Um after his Socceroos call up. He's probably checked out mentally now. I mean he just I don't, I don't like the way he's gone about things this season, Williams. It looked like, you know, he had his falling out and stuff. Um he finally got himself back into the side, built himself up, got that Socceroos call up, and now it looks like he's kind of gone stuff you again almost. Yeah. Um and that's why I question Perth Glory because I think they're a team that's going to look very different next season and I think there's going to be potentially five or six going out and those players are in the first team and is that influencing their end of season because they seem to, like you said, mentally checked out. Yeah, yeah. look, and I think you're right. There will be a bit of a, um, a different side next season and, you know, you, you want to see those players fighting for their positions now. But look, I, I think it's going to be a cracking game. Um, I, I'm going to tip probably another draw in this one um, just because I think that the teams are too hard to split but um, I, I think it's going to be a cracking game. Yeah, fantastic game. I will agree with the draw and the more we talk about this, the more excited yeah. I am because I just realised like scenarios that can happen yeah. on the Friday and Saturday night games. This could be huge. Yeah, it, it could really open it up and look, you've got McLaren coming back to Perth as well um, and oh, I just think, yeah, this is going to be a cracking game. Any chance he comes back to Perth? If Kira leaves? Nah. M- McLaren, no way. Not unless they're going to make him a marquee. I think McLaren's probably not going to even stay in the A-League. He's got 80 clubs chasing him. I reckon him. they could put him as a marquee. Well, they could, but I don't think he'd want to. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, don't I think, think he's going to Europe. He's, he's going to, yeah, he's, going to, he's got to try his luck somewhere. Um, whether he's ready or not, I don't know, but... He's, you know, he's done the business pretty much two seasons now in the A League. I think he's got to go to a bit of a higher level and challenge himself. I think you'd uh, go to Scotland and join Rogic. See what happens. Yeah, well, that wouldn't be too bad. Um, he, he needs to play in that kind of attacking mentality side. Um, someone that is going to feed him. But look, uh, his, his finishing is. This is the thing. When he was at Glory, he looked so promising. Um, and his finishing, I remember, was just off. Um, and then like reversed, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and since he left the glory, he just, um, he got his finishing in order. Um, he wasn't really getting the opportunities at glory. Um, went to the Brisbane Raw and things just really turned around for him and he's taken his game to another level. Um, so I think he's gone next season, but the, you know, the Raw will be depending on him. I think you'll see in this game, it's going to be all about McLaren, I think for them. Yeah, me too. Um, so that'll be another interesting game. We've got a bit of a dead rubber on the Sunday, the only Sunday game, the Mariners versus the Jets. I think Mariners will kill them. Yeah, I think so too. I think too. it'll be yeah. an absolute demolition. I think it'll be the highest scoring game of the week too. Wow. Well, yeah, it could very well be. I mean, and this is, there's a, look, this is the old rivalry, the F3 it derby. Is. This, this yeah. used to be, back in the back in the day, these were like two of the top sides in the A-League um, and they were duking it out. I remember some classic encounters between these two um, uh, back in the day when you, you'd get 15, 20,000 in Newcastle for this game. It, you know, um, and you know, ten, ten, fifteen thousand in, in Central Coast as well. This used to be a cracker of a of a game. Both teams kind of on fallen on hard times, but if you look at the trajectory, I think Mariners are still in the right direction. Um, the the question is what's happening with Roy O'Donovan. 
Um, looks like you know Newcastle want him. A couple of the clubs want him. Um, are the Mariners going to offer him a better deal? That's that's an interesting one. Um, I ask if he deserves it. He's been so disappointing the last I don't know eight weeks. He has, but I think he's proven himself enough that he can do the job. Um, and with and in a in a better side with better service, he he should be a, a fifteen yeah, um, I agree. plus goal. There's no scorer. way he's at the Mariners next season. No, I don't think so. No. no, I don't think so. But I think you're right. In this game, the Mariners, they're, they're proactive. They like to attack. They've got pace. Um, I think they're going to smash the Jets. Yeah, it'll be a 4 nil, in my opinion, probably. Yeah. Um, so that'll do us for the A-League. Obviously, a huge week, so we spent a bit more time on it. Um, we won't go into the English Premier League in too much detail. There is, um, I don't know if you saw games last night and there's games tonight. Uh, it is a midweek round. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest takeaway from the EPL for me is Man United. Mm. I think they're like 20 games um, undefeated at home, but they've... Like, I think they're one of the worst teams, like, goals scored at home as well. So, I mean, like, you look at them on one hand, they're um, tough to beat, still challenging for the top four, obviously. But um, disappointing, like, week for them, right? They drew to West Brom and then drew to Everton, both at home. The uh, Ibra penalty against Everton, very unfortunate for Everton. What do you what do you make of the EPL right now? Because, I mean, there's literally under 10 games to go. And um, even Chelsea, right, they've slipped a bit and, like, seven points behind Spurs. Things have opened up a little bit. They have, and and like you said, it's kind of petered out for a lot of the sides. It um, has, yeah. And look, I mean, and and all of a sudden, it, like you said, it has kind of opened up. I wouldn't go so far as to say that Tottenham are going <laughs> to no. win it, but look, there, there's a chance. It's a conversation now, right? There, yeah, like, there's yeah. there's certainly a chance. Seven points um, is not insurmountable in what nine games to go. Um, 27 points up for grabs. Um, they only need to make up seven. It's not. And, they, and their goal difference is good as well. So I think Tottenham have been, again, just the, the dark horse. Um, just like they were last season. It's almost like, you know, there's so much talk about the other clubs, but there's Tottenham right there in, in second spot. Um, so if they finish second again, like, you know, that's, that's an amazing story, I think. Um, Poch has really got that defense working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, 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 and yeah, it's just, and they just go about their business as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, Man United picked up a lot of draws, 12 draws now for them. Um, <laughs> And I guess that's a little bit of a Mourinho mold, um, but you would expect them to be stronger at home. Um, the other story is Arsenal now sixth and equal on points with Everton in seventh. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, what what can you say there? They're in a bit of strife now. Um, and that, I mean, look, the, the gap between Tottenham to Chelsea is the same now as between Arsenal and Man City in fourth. Um, Arsenal do have a game in hand, but, um, they're, they're seven points behind City for a Champions League spot. Um, wow. That, that's, that shows you how much this, this season has been topsy turvy. Uh, I just think that the, the top four has really become the top six now. Um, and, Arsenal are in a bit of danger there of slipping out completely and having a real, um, being up against it next season then when all these other teams will undoubtedly strengthen again um, and, and try and solidify those top four or five positions. Um, it's weird for Arsenal, right? Because if you take away the off-the-field stuff like the Arsene Wenger, the protests, stuff, and you look just purely at the table, um, Arsenal aren't in a too bad position if you're just looking for them to finish in the top four. But I mean, when you throw in all the drama and all the, um, the off the field stuff, like it's very difficult to see where they make up the points, even though if they win against West Ham, they're only what four points behind, um, City. Yeah. So, I mean, like you look at just purely on paper and you know, like, yeah, Arsenal have a chance here, but like, it's just difficult to see them getting past this because I mean like we talk about like in the A-League players mentally checking out I feel like half the team at Arsenal have done the same so. yeah and that's that's got to be disappointing um, and there's there's a bit of defiance from Wenger now so I, I think he's he's there for next season definitely um, I, I think that's unfortunately yeah that's that's <laughs> a given um, but look I mean you could say they're in a, still a pretty good position like you said they win on you know they win against West Ham they're back to four points behind City so they're, they're not terribly 
fully out of it. But no. I think the difference is that in previous seasons, they'd be more like, oh, they can almost win it, but not quite. Whereas now they're actually struggling to, to sort of keep in touch with the top four. Um, so I think the narrative has changed a little bit for them. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the other interesting one for me is Leicester City. Um, all of yeah, a sudden. Been, they're 10th. Can you yeah, believe it? Look, I, I mean, as far as, I mean, how can you say now that, you know, they shouldn't have got rid of Ranieri now? I mean, you look at that and they have well and truly justified the sacking. Um, because for me, it just shows you and highlights how big player power is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's they right. They can if kill the a manager. Don't want to do, yeah, pretty much. Um, and I think that's exactly what happened there. They weren't happy for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, they, they got rid of him. Um, and all of a sudden, I mean, and look, maybe you could say that that is on the manager, that he wasn't getting the tactics right. He wasn't getting the man management right. And now, you know, this guy's come in and Shakespeare and, you know, release the shackles or, or whatever. <laughs> but I think, like you said, it's more just that the players themselves decided that how they want to play now. Yeah. Um, and you wonder how much of that is going on at a club like Arsenal. Um, a lot, I think. You know, uh, but yeah, the situation there is obviously different. But yeah, that Leicester have, have really turned things around. Um, really, I mean, they're, they're well and truly out of the relegation zone now. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah. They, they, they've saved themselves. West Ham are, are in amongst it. Um, what team do you think um, above the, the, the bottom three is more likely to slip in? You think it's Palace? Or? Yeah, Palace for me. Um, West Ham, I think, should be okay. Um, Palace are probably the one with the danger signs. Um, but really, the only one that can get out of it, you, you'd think, would be Hull. Um, yeah, I think so. So yeah. it, you, even with Palace, you know, they only need to pick up a few more points and you think they'd be safe. Um, but... Look, full credit to a team like Leicester that they've got themselves out of it. And you look at teams like West Brom as well now, like, you know, super, super season for them. The most of their goals have come from McCauley and um, Brunt and such. Like, their back line is, it's a pull this team, right? So you expect it. And that's where their goals have come from. And um, they've been strong. I don't think they're going to get a Europa spot. I think it'll go to Everton and um, Arsenal. So, I mean, they're not going to get any reward, but, um, you know, fantastic effort for them, as well as Watford. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Too. Um, strong, strong seasons. Um, look, the, the, you look at the upcoming fixtures, and you think um, Arsenal could could claw their way back in here because you got Arsenal, West Ham coming up. If, if you say that that's a win for Arsenal, Chelsea are playing Man City, and you say that's a win for Chelsea. Yep. Like I said, all of a sudden the gaps decreased, um, and then the next game for Arsenal is Crystal Palace. You'd You'd say, okay, can you know Arsenal get a win there again? Um, Man City are playing Hull. They'd probably get a win there as well. So they might be able to claw it back to four and then kind of maintain that and then try and work their way back in slowly. Um, Chelsea are playing Everton. That's another... Oh, sorry, no, Chelsea are playing Bournemouth. Everton are playing Leicester. So uh, it's going to be touch and go for a, for a club like Arsenal now. Um, if they don't pick up six points in the next, um, what, five or six days, it's over. Yeah, like, I think, yeah, yeah. Against West Ham and, and Palace, they Palace. have to win. Yeah. Um, especially if, if you say that Chelsea are going to probably knock off City. I think that's going to be a cracking game. Um, but you'd probably tip Chelsea in that one. Um, but I yeah. hope so because if they lose, I have a really bad feeling about Spurs. <laughs> look, I, look, I, I, yeah, Spurs are just—I have to say—super impressive. Like, no one talks win, about them. If they win the title, I'm uninstalling everything involved. <laughs> <laughs> with my computer we're shutting I'm the podcast down yeah we're, we're shutting, shutting the podcast down, down it's, it's locking the right. doors nah, look, barricading the windows you've got to give credit done. to Tottenham though because no one talks about Tottenham like no yeah, one talks no. about I mean they do talk about them but they don't talk yeah. about them the way they talk about Chelsea the way they talk about Man City whether Tottenham are going good or bad no one really talks about them. Whereas, you know, City lose two games in a row and, you know, people are trying to lynch Guardiola um, yeah. you know, Man United, this and that, and all of a sudden it's the Mourinho show again, and obviously crisis time at Arsenal. But no one really talks about Tottenham. Um, uh, and, I and guess they, because how dominant Chelsea have been, people haven't caught up to just how close it could be. In that's two right. Weeks. That's yeah. right. But look, I even feel like last season, obviously, it was you know the Leicester, the Leicester show, and everyone was like, "Oh, Leicester and Arsenal and Arsenal," but Tottenham <laughs> were right there. Yeah, and, and again, no one really talked about them. Um, and like you said, uh, 
I wouldn't be surprised if you know if Chelsea slip up within, as in like just with one game, and Tottenham keep going. Uh, you know, could be could be getting close, could be getting hairy. I don't. The thing about Tottenham is, I just don't think they've got the the mental capacity to to just take out the league because I think there is something there that you need a bit of that mental edge. Um, yeah, and that's probably it's just a question whether last season's failure has added that or made it worse. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's and there's something about those kind of clubs like a Chelsea or a Man United or something they just think it's kind of like their right to win it. Exactly. Um, yeah. and and there is a little bit of that of knowing how to win it. Um, and, and we saw Liverpool like that in, in seasons past slip up where they just didn't know how to win it anymore. Um, so I still, you know, Chelsea is still the favourites, but it's not over fully just yet. Yeah, it purely depends on if City can uh, updo Chelsea. I think if that happens, then yeah, yeah it's game on. That's but, right. Um, I don't think they will, though. No, nah, me neither. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave the EPL and the podcast there for this week, uh, unless there's anything else you want to chat about. No, no. Oh, that's that's uh, all, folks. I think it's going to be a ripper weekend, especially the A-League fixtures this weekend. They're yeah, going I think to be the great. A-League is, um, is the key thing this weekend. Yeah, and, and a couple of big EPL games as well. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. And we'll be back, obviously, next week to talk about all things that. Until then, I thank you for joining me, Adam. Thank you. And you can find us at www.theaverageaustralian.com where you're on YouTube, SoundCloud, Patreon, iTunes, and everywhere else. Of course, is subscribe to the RSS off the, uh, the website. And thank you for listening. And we will be back this time next week. So until then, bye-bye. Bye.